What is going on trainers? Drum Villain here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're going to be talking about the Liverpool regionals that took place for Pokemon Go over the last weekend which I did attend, I did enter and it's the first regional tournament, the first official one that there has been um, for Pokemon Go. Other tournaments have always been organised by the player base. There was one invitational not long after um, PvP was first released into the game that was like a showcase of the feature. You've, you've probably seen the famous final match between PokeK and Pogo King. But yeah, this is the first one that's been run by Niantic, by the Pokemon company, in a very official capacity. And it's the first real steps towards pushing Pokemon Go into being what they, I'm, I'm assuming they hope it to be a full eSport on par with at least the main series Pokemon video game tournaments and the Pokemon trading card game, which is kind of exciting for the direction that Pokemon Go might take. It might put a bit more of a spotlight Onto PvP, hopefully it gets a little bit more work put in on Niantic's end, on balancing the game out, levelling it out, making it more stable, making it more consistent in its gameplay. We all know the, the shield glitches, the fast move glitches, some of the charge move, like it's just a little bit up and down. So hopefully it puts a bit more eyes and maybe a bit more budget into actually fixing this game mode and making it a little bit more effective. So this video is going to be a bit of a vlog about my experience with the Liverpool um, tournament, what I experienced there, what you guys should expect. I'm going to be talking about the format. And like I said, if it's all over the place, it's, I apologize, I've never really done a vlog style video before. So I'll probably be pausing on and off to talk about what was actually going on in that moment, give some context so you guys can get the best idea what to expect if you're planning on attending any of the other regionals that are coming up. I believe there's one in Germany in a few weeks or a few in the Americas as we get closer towards the summer which will all be leading up to the Worlds tournament that'll be taking place in London. I believe it's in August this year. I'm going to be breaking down this whole thing to quite basic levels because I know a lot of you guys only really have experience with the Go Battle League. So I'm not going to assume you have knowledge of the Self League and how that generally runs to uh, get a gauge on this because it does use a slightly different format to what you'll be used to if you're used to battling in Go Battle League and not any Self Arena tournaments. It got really dark in here all of a sudden. Right, put a light on. Give me a bit more orangey glow. Now, we do actually have some stuff from Liverpool. We got some Pokemon card booster packs, which I haven't opened yet. I might open them at the end of the video. I don't really know much about Pokemon cards, but you know, see if we get some nice pulls all the same. And I can't really call this stuff freebies because you do pay for entry to these tournaments. There is an entrance fee. And it was, for this one, it was about 50 euros, which comes down to about 41 British pounds at the time that I paid. Um, obviously, give or take with, um, whatever you call it, um, currency exchange rates. That's the, that's the phrase. Um, but yeah, so there's some free stuff in there that we'll be going over after the vloggy bits later on. So you've probably heard people talk about the choose six, pick three format. And this is the format that self tournaments use. And what this means is that you pick six Pokemon to take to the tournament. They are the only six Pokemon you can use for the entire run. For every match, every battle against every train, you have to use the same six Pokemon. You can't TM their moves, you can't power them up, you can't swap them out for a different Pokemon of the same species, you can't swap to say a different Hypno with different punch moves, you can't swap from a Last Resort Umbreon to a Psychic Umbreon, anything like that. You have to use the same six Pokemon for the whole thing. So that's where a lot of your initial team building has to come into play. You have to really think about six balanced Pokemon that cover each other's weaknesses. You have to accept that some Pokemon are going to be undermining your particular team build. They're going to cause you more issues than others. So you've got to deal with the meta as a whole with just six Pokemon and know that the opponent is going to be able to see those six Pokemon before you battle and you're going to be able to see their six Pokemon before you battle. So, you pick your six Pokemon, you go to your tournament, you get your first opponent. How does that work? You meet your opponent, you greet them, and then you sit down and you can see each other's six Pokemon. You can see what six Pokemon they've got, they can see what six you've got. You cannot see the movesets. If they've got an Azumarill on their team, you can see what CP it is, but you cannot see whether or not it has Ice Beam, Player Off, Hydro Pump. So you have to maybe look at the rest of the team, make an assumption based on what they would want to cover weaknesses for in a Zoom Rose moveset, or once you start battling them, you can find out the hard way by taking a charge move or shielding an Ice Beam when you didn't need to, or something like that. 
this is where the pick three part really comes into play because you can see their six and they can see your six and you're going to play normal PvP style matchups against this opponent. You're going to pick three Pokemon from your six that you think are going to do well against their Pokemon and also that counter what you think they're going to bring against you knowing that they can see your six. So a little bit of 5D chess going on there. You know, you got to be quite big brain trying to get inside your opponent's head thinking about what they're going to be thinking and expecting to bring to battle and also thinking that they're going to be trying to work out the same for you. So it's quite different to go battle league in terms of in that you're just going blind. You just pick three strong Pokemon, chuck them together and hope that it lines up well against your opponent's three. Here there's a lot more thought and tactics to those Pokemon. So go battle league skill goes a long way in terms of being able to battle, being able to count moves, being able to, you know, know all your typings, your ins and outs and what to expect. But there's a lot more depth to how you approach these matches compared to, like I said, standard blind go battle league. Now, the format for this tournament is the Great League. It's just the open Great League, 1500 CP, no bans, legendaries are allowed, XL Pokemon are allowed, best buddy boost is allowed. But same as I said before, you as much as you cannot change the Pokemon around, you cannot change the best buddy mid-tournament. If you've got an XL level 51 Bastiodon and an XL level 51 Sableye, you have to pick one of those to have your best buddy boost on. You cannot change them in between matches, in between games, in between opponents. That one Pokemon has to be your best buddy for the entire thing, which is not everybody needs that on their team. Everybody needs best buddy boost, but just if it's relevant to you, bear that in mind, you will not be able to change which Pokemon is best buddied throughout the tournament. So you want to only really have one on your team that needs it. And against each opponent, you play three matchups and best of three moves on in the tournament. And what this does allow to happen is if in your first matchup, you come up against their Registeel and it throws both Flash Cannon and Focus Blast at your team. You know it's not got Zap Cannon. They can't TM it to have Zap Cannon in the next matchup. So that means you know that Jellicent is very, very safe against that Registeel for matchup two and three. Maybe you had a Jellicent you're a little bit nervous to bring in, feeling like it doesn't do that well against a Zap Cannon Registeel, but now you know it's not. So you know you can bring Jellicent safely in against that thing and do quite well. And they can learn the same things about your team. If you've got a spicy moveset, you're bringing a Mew and you bring in a Focus Blast Mew and you Focus Blast them in the first game and it gives you that first win, they will be ready for it in the next two matchups. They'll be expecting it and they might bring a different set of three Pokemon to matchups two and three to prepare for that and be ready for that. So since this tournament's done with, I don't mind showing you guys my team, what I took, talking a bit about it, just as an example of the team that I did um, bring that is not the sheet of paper that i thought it was this is the one so we got a team list so before the tournament we were given a link via email to this document this pokemon go team list and we were told to fill it in preemptively before we attended which would have all the details of the team that we'd be using on it what actually happened was that they had some printed out there that were different to these forms that we had to refill in but we were told that this would be required so I printed about 400 of them off just in case any other trainer that was attending needed a team list and was going to be in trouble without it. So they had them to fill in. That's why I've got so many here. So let's take a look at my team that I brought to the tournament. So as you can see, we had Galarian Stunfisk. So we did have to note that it was the Galarian Regional variant because that's just is where it is. They ask you to keep that information included and it's very important when it comes to things like Stunfisk because regular Stunfisk is dramatically different. We have a purified Sableye which again they do say you have to note if it is a purified Pokemon or a Shadow Pokemon because I brought Shadow Nidoqueen. The moves do have to be in order that they are in the game. Um, some people did say they were threatened with being penalized for not having this written in. So because on Shadow Nidoqueen Earth Power sits above Poison Fang on my Pokemon actual screen. That's the order I put them in. So the full team, Umbreon, Stunfisk, Medicham, Sableye, Azumarill, and Nidoqueen. So that's the rough format. The pick six, choose three, the team building, some of the thought that goes into that. So let's take a look at actual Liverpool in person and what to expect from that, how my day actually went, how I did, if you're curious about how I actually did perform in this tournament, let's go ahead and jump straight over into that stuff.
What's going on guys? Just chilling in the hotel room on Friday night. We're somewhere in between Widnes and the John Lennon airport. So about 25 minutes out of Liverpool. So it's a short travel in the morning. Otherwise it's about a three hour drive for me from where I live. That'd be a very, very early start. So I figured come stay somewhat nearby and uh, all the accommodation in Liverpool was extremely expensive by the time that uh, the actual registration for the tournament opened. So nice place, nice cheap place. And I think karaoke is going on downstairs. So if you guys can hear some uh, some tunes that I might have to drown out depending on how much it recognises this copyrighted music, we'll just have to see. But great place, great atmosphere so far. And uh, still working on the team, still uh, making some last minute adjustments. It's a little bit late for it, but you know. But uh, the, uh, the nerves and the excitement is setting in a little bit. I'm a little bit anxious about tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it and meeting people and the battle in, but it is it's the first time I've done something. It might be my first in-person PvP tournament, which is a little scary to get to grips with a little bit, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a great day. But yeah, I'm gonna have to crack on with the team, make some last minute decisions, work out exactly what I'm planning to take and what I'm willing to leave behind. Big decisions. Probably going to regret all of them tomorrow when I come up against some opponents that have exactly the right counters for my line, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be fun. All right, guys. It's a little chilly this morning, but feeling reasonably refreshed. I slept moderately well, so should be all set for today. Feeling good about it. So, yeah, let's get on the road and get there. Alright guys, just pulled up at the King's Dock car park near the ACC Liverpool. We've got a stop for the regional championships here, which is pretty special. It's not a load up right now, but I think I'm going to try and get a lure on that if I can get nearby pretty soon. The doors aren't due to open until about 8 o'clock and it's 7.40 now. So, a little while to wait, but better to be early than late, right? For things like this, you never know how long it's going to take uh, to get in. They've said they're going to be quite stringent COVID protocols in place. You know, everyone's going to be wearing a mask apparently inside for the full day and everyone's got to be vaccinated or show negative PCRs and things to get inside. So it might take a while to get checked in. I still actually need to write my team up. I haven't actually, I've got the forms, but I haven't actually written the team up yet, which is better do that now, actually, I think while, while grabbing a quick snack and then head over there. Is going on trainers. Drumbillion here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're at the regional championships for Pokemon Go in Liverpool at the ACC which is this building here. Looking forward to it, it's going to be a great fun day. It's just after eight o'clock so I think the door should have just opened. I'm going to go get checked in and get ready I guess ready for the tournament. Now the queue to get into the venue was absolutely massive because not only were there Pokemon Go players queuing up to get into this building, there were the main series video game players, there were the trading card game players, all queuing to get into their same regional competitions. So we, I joined the queue at about 8am which was roughly when the doors were meant to open to the venue but it took me till about quarter past nine to actually get inside the building and then get checked in and we didn't end up using the forms that we were told we had to fill in. Preemptively they provided different ones on the day that we ended up having to fill in separately so a little bit of chaotic miscommunication there but again it worked out fine when the tournament started about two hours later than actually originally intended but that was to make sure that all the players that were registered got a chance to get in and get booked in all right guys registered the team we're all set up ready to go we're all we're just chilling in the uh the cantini area for now feeling pretty good about it i haven't seen my brackets yet see so what i'm playing against first but I know there's a chance that I'll be playing Lurgan pretty soon and he's a very strong Sylph battler. I spent a lot of the morning chatting to Status Stan, who is number one on Sylph um, currently in the world. Easily one of the best players, especially in the UK, but probably the world as well. So it's been a lot of fun so far, but still no battles yet, but looking forward to get started. All right, if you guys are curious about the setup for the actual battling and what they actually provide, this is what we've got provided Galaxy A52s that everyone will be signing into with either Google or Trainer Club account. We've got charging points, we've got nice spacious seating areas. Now, I just want to jump in and say, apparently Niantic bought these phones for the use of these tournaments. So you might be using similar phone models at your tournament. They are Galaxy A52 
S52s and also the charging points that you can see are actually alarmed as well. So if your phone comes off charge, if you manage to unplug the wire, an alarm will go off so that security can stop people from stealing the smartphones that they've provided for the tournament. So we're feeling pretty good about it. It's gonna be nice, easy, hopefully everything runs smoothly, not so much lag, not so many bugs, you know. Fingers crossed, it all works out pretty well. I'm getting pretty nervous now for my first few matches, but optimistic too. Now this rule reading and sorting out by the judges was a little bit chaotic all over the place and not all that clear. So I'll just talk to you guys about a bit of what the actual format on the day looked like. So all the players were split into two groups, group A and group B. And those groups were entirely separated from each other for the entire day. So anyone in group B would not play anyone in group A unless they made it all the way to the finals. So the tournament format that they actually ran was double elimination. And what that means is that you can afford to lose one game against one opponent and you're still in the tournament. You can still claw your way back through, beat more opponents, make it to the finals and you can still win the whole thing. This might feel a little bit unforgiving because you could have turned up in Liverpool, play your first two rounds against two opponents, lose them both and that's it. You're out of the whole thing and there aren't any more matches for you to play in the tournament which isn't usually how self tournaments are running. So if you tend to play multiple opponents, regardless of whether you're winning or losing, and then you get kind of seeded based on who you're winning against, who you're losing against. And there's a bit more opportunity to play more games and prove yourself overall across the full tournament. Now, an unfortunate thing about using devices provided for the tournament is while it does make everyone on a level playing field and makes the whole thing more fair, it means that we don't have access to recorded battles to actually show you guys now after the fact because I wasn't recording the matches on my phone. So I can't show you any of the actual matchups that I was playing which is a real shame because there were some fantastic games. Right guys, hey, good, yeah, luck. good luck. Good luck guys. There were QR codes on the tables which led you to this web page which gave you all the brackets for the full tournament that were being updated live as games were being played so you could see who was winning who and who you might get matched up against next. I was in bracket A and my first opponent was a trainer called Food King Win who gave me two very very good matches. I actually lost both leads in these games and managed to flip them around and still take two wins to move on into the second round but GG's to you Food King Win. In my second round I got paired up against Azare. Azare is a notoriously strong self arena battler who gave me two very very good matchups but I did manage to come out on top and move on into the third round against a mind joke. A mind joke did manage to defeat me in two rounds and bumped me down into the losers bracket so at this point I was now if I lost one more matchup against another trainer I was out of the tournament so it was all to play for very tense matchups. In the losers bracket, trainers were battling against each other until there was only one trainer left that had not lost two games that could then move on into the finals of that day. If you go all the way through the day and didn't lose any games, you only had to win five matchups to go into the finals. However, if you lost one game, in total you end up having to win eight or nine rounds to actually claw your way through the losers bracket to make it back into the finals. So as the day went on, I had more matchups against 8-9 Breed, Carlos, Hera, Aerobubble. I managed to defeat those guys very, very well played to you guys and made it all the way through to round seven in the losers bracket. All right, guys, update from partway through. We're through six rounds at this point. I've lost one game and won five. But right now, there's a very intense match going on behind me that everyone is very, very invested in. And it is Statistan, who is currently rank one in the world on Sylph, battling a trainer called Lurgan. I'm not super familiar with Sylph rankings, but I believe he's also top 10 in the world. And I think I have to play the loser. So I'm pretty screwed either way, but just keeping you guys updated. I was wrong about this at the time because both Statistan and Lurgan were in group B, whereas I was in group A. So unless um, we'd have made it into the finals, there wasn't a chance that I'd have been battling either of those two. And if you're wondering why I'm not actually watching the matches, it's because what I'm still in the running in the tournament at this point. There's a chance that I will be battling them at some point 
and I don't want to see what movesets they've got on their Pokemon. So that was a very tense and very exciting match to watch. I didn't want to watch it and have an unfair advantage in knowing what movesets some of their Pokemon actually were running. In round seven, I was against a trainer called Dino Sky, and after going one win apiece, he managed to etch it out in the third matchup and managed to take the win and knock me out of the tournament. All right, guys, I'm out. Seven rounds in. I uh, lost round three and got knocked down to the loser's bracket, so it was one more loss to be eliminated and managed to claw my way through another um, three, three, four matches and then lost in round seven to Dino Sky, so one place short of the... Uh, the semi-finals but I've had a fantastic day it's been I'm really happy with my performance I've never done an in-person tournament before so it's been a lot of fun the community's been fantastic great to chat to people get to know people it's been a lot of fun despite being out of the tournament I did hang around for quite a while after this point and got to know some of the guys that were there played a small casual um four-way round robin tournament went and got a cheeky pint with them Went for a walk we around Liverpool for 30 minutes or so before heading back to the cars and I was going to drive out of Liverpool back to the hotel. Well, we're, well, we're back uh, back in the car at least. It's been a... It's felt like a long day even though it's not actually that late right now. I've just been for a beer with a couple of the guys I've met today. So shout out to you three. It's uh, a lot of fun getting to know you and everyone else that I spoke to today and hung out with. Everyone from... Uh, Status Stan um, at the beginning of the morning in the queue, uh, queuing up together and uh, all the way through to the people I battled and had the unfortunate responsibility of eliminating and to the epic trainers that kicked that kicked my ass today. It's It's been a ton of fun. Um, in all honesty, the I do want to say that the organisation of the whole thing um, today has been a little bit lacklustre. Like the fact that the actual registration opened like only three weeks ago is a bit insane they never worked out the originally in the post announcing these regionals Niantic said that we'd be able to link trainer club accounts um, to a google account if you use google to log in which would be required for these tournaments and that actually never got um, sorted out and up until even two days before the tournament uh, me and Statistan were both in Discord chats with staff of Tournament Centre trying to find out if we could even compete because we use Google Logins and that's that's not really been on, that, that communication has not been there. I was chasing up Niantic support and they never got back to me once I explained my issue to them several times. They just stopped replying or they just ignored me at that point and which isn't really on for players to not know and there's a reason that the turnout wasn't sold out today. It was a good turnout um, for a first event it was 79 places um, were filled today, which is, you know, it, it's great. It's it's great showing, but there's a reason that it didn't do more. Niantic hasn't given us a lot of reason to have faith in the PvP system. Overall, they constantly do it a bit of a disservice, I believe, over the long haul. They do neglect it a little bit. And I do hope that this world run overall um, and, and this whole setup this year, I do hope that it makes them take a little bit more seriously and put a little bit more effort into tweaking the game making it um more robust fixing the bugs um dealing with i know they always say check your internet when there's laggy issues but if you're on several hundred megabit a second flawless internet that never fails you in any other capacity but go battle league doesn't work you know that it's not um it's not your internet you know that it's their servers that are just not up to scratch um, in some cases at least anyway I just feel like things could have been improved on but overall the experience the community makes it worth it GG's to everyone I've played today it's been fantastic getting to know you all and uh, honestly I'm surprised to have taken it as far as I did today it's my first in-person tournament that's anything even remotely like a self-style tournament with the um, choose six pick three uh, format I've never participated in anything like that before it's been a lot of fun to get to know it and I didn't actually expect to do as well as I did because most of the people at this tournament today um, were self veterans, people that really knew what they were doing. We had some real world class, absolute top of the pile trainers here today. So to hold my own amongst them is more than enough for me. And it's a little disappointing to not be going to Worlds, but also very, very happy with how it's gone this time. I've learned a lot of lessons and I'll definitely be bringing my A game next time. Right, I'm going to set off driving back. This it's. 
I might stay at the hotel tonight, I might not. I'm gonna drive the 30 minutes to the hotel and then make my decision on whether or not I'm going to crash there or just check out and drive the next two and a half hours back home. So this might be me ending the video, it might not be. We'll find out. Is there a montage? Is there more footage? Wait and see. Just realized I didn't actually tell you guys what my actual placement in the tournament was because the player base was split in half into group A and group B. It means that I actually came, despite coming like top three, top four in group A, it shakes out as being roughly top eight overall across the entire tournament because there are about four, three or four players on the opposite bracket that also outperformed um, my performance in making it to the final. So I was very, very close to being in the finals, but just fell short by one or two rounds, but still very, very happy with that showing. So if you guys have enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button. I just wanted to let you guys know what Liverpool was like as an experience, what to expect if you're going to one of the tournaments in the Americas, in Europe, in Asia that's upcoming this year, since this was the first one globally. Great amount of fun. Community makes it a million times worth it. Hopefully um, some of the things that went wrong in terms of organization this time get sorted out um, for the future ones for you guys. Oftentimes the first time these things happen is when a lot of the issues get identified and get ironed out. So I hope it's a lot smoother for you guys down the line. All right, guys, I did promise you a look at the stuff that we did actually get from Liverpool, some of the freebies that they included. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we did get a free play mat and I believe it's for playing like the Pokemon trading card game. For example, it's a nice, decent quality uh, Matt, it's a nice print and this is actually Whimsicott which is pretty nice because these regionals did take place over the Cottony Spotlight weekend so I don't mind that, that's pretty cool. A couple of pairs of booster packs that we actually got with some uh, free points that we got to spend at one of the stores that was there over the weekend. Haven't opened those yet to see what's inside. We did get a promotional Pokemon trading card. We got the boss's orders but the Pokemon um, champ regional championships um, edition of that and I'm not getting focus on the camera but I'm not taking it out of this sleeve either because I don't have another sleeve on hand to put it in if needs be. We just got an information brochure I suppose about the uh, the rough setup to expect from both this regionals and another one that I believe the same company is running towards the end of May. We also got a face mask and some hand gel included which was kind of ironic because we didn't actually end up being given these bags until like 2 3 p.m on the day at which point you already had to have had a mask and have a hand gel on hand and things so also we were supposed to get a pull string bag that was not included because um, tournament center said that the drawstring bags they were having um, shipped in, got caught up in customs, so we didn't get them. I don't know. I don't think we're going to get them. I don't think they're going to ship them out to us or anything like that. So I guess we just don't get them, which is a bit of a shame. All right, guys, I did say I was going to open these two booster packs of Pokemon cards on the video just because they came from the regionals. Who knows? Maybe we get something pretty lucky and pretty nice out of them. So you guys are going to have to be forgiving with me, having no idea what I'm doing and even how to open packs of Pokemon cards, but we're just going to figure this out and wing it a little bit. We're going to start with the pack with Deoxys and Espeon on the packet, just so we can finish off with my boy Umbreon on the second pack. All right, we put the front, the back four to the front. If I do believe I've seen this once or twice in videos and streams. Okay, and we got our Cheeky code there for any of you guys to use if you use them. I know I don't personally. Okay, start off. We've got a Psychic Energy on the front. we got Grimsley. I do not know who that is. We got Pukamuku. we got Archon. I quite like Archon. That's quite a nice um, card graphic. we got Fletch Inder. That's nice. Snova. Murkrow. Execute, Alone Grimer, Wimpod, and that's a that's hollow, right? Oh, and Gumshoes behind that, but it's kind of nice, kind of sparkly. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means that it is 
particularly rare or not. I do not know what I am looking at, in all fairness, apart from the fact that they are Pokemon. Right, next pack. All right, opening the pack with Darkrai and Umbreon on the cover this time, and we've got the second code there. If you guys want to use that, I believe they're only one use, aren't they? I'm not 100% sure. Let's take a look at what we got in this booster. Got a nice electric energy. Another Grimsley, because why not? Another one of these fellas, and another Arch. And my God, are these the same booster? <laughs> I don't think so, but we got a nice Joltik. I, like, I like Joltik. Can't wait for that one shiny to finally be released in Pokemon Go. We got Dratini. We got Young Goose to go with our Gumshoes from the other booster. A cheeky Yanma. One more Execute. And our Hollow is Crustle. And then we've got that thing whose name I have never dared try and pronounce and I might never ever use in a video so I don't have to attempt to pronounce that and not do it absolutely massive disservice. But hello, Crustle, kind of nice artwork, nice card, nice shin to it. But yeah, you guys can tell me whether or not these are any good or not because I honestly have zero idea. The main focus on the channel usually is Go Battle League content, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider hitting the subscribe button. We are normally hitting Legend Rank every season. We're making global leaderboards here and there when we're not spicing it up too heavily. We're talking top-end tactics, strategies, gameplay methodologies as we're going through it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button, you know, stick around. I promise you it's worth it. If you're already subscribed to the channel, you're an absolute legend, and I will catch all of you guys next time.